this is the very last night the Egyptians you saw yesterday you shall see them no more Nigeria will usher you to the new Nigeria is a new season Nigeria is a new day Nigeria is a new day arise and shine for your light has come the glory of the Lord is risen upon you now listen nobody logging out we normally seal this with a prophetic trumpet sound you know the number 10 has been our prophetic number sometime in the day I got a, a message from one of us here and he sent me a flyer do you know that this presidential election will be the 10th one 10th one we've had 10 as a number so it's a special special season with a good God bless you let's welcome God's servant let me tell you the sacrifices that this man made and remember I've said everybody who minister here and in fact I've added those people whose songs have been our prophetic songs Dulce and Frank Frank Edwards we're going to put up their details because God loves it when his servants who minister are ministered to and I sense that this particular challenge I say we need to you see the people in the kingdom of darkness are raising a very serious sacrifice even in this time of election we are trying to load this altar there is no altar without sacrifice yes we have prayed we have sung songs we have consecrated ourselves but we want to also release our substances don't worry not, not to me but to this team to apostle to mercy and we're going to do that very shortly and blow the trumpet sound and wave our journal please don't go anywhere we celebrate you hallelujah. hallelujah praise the name of the lord pastor nat thank you so so very much thank you so very much and um i appreciate minister mercy amazing amazing worshiper hallelujah i'd like you to lift your voice all across the globe in one minute and begin to pray declare that this is your moment in the spirit is someone praying make declarations of faith even by the power of the holy spirit take a minute or two to pray in the spirit Saprantes caperetos kale grande que barato sabedes crapata gata balacata frasca de beleca te pash em planta caparacosa de balasca pereto sataria da ba saprate que pereto scadiata your night for an encounter by the spirit of the living God that your life will never be the same never be the same by the spirit of the living God hallelujah john 16 and verse 24 the bible says he that told you have asked for nothing in my name it says ask that you will receive to the end that your joy may be full hallelujah it is only those who ask that receive i want you all over the world and in this studio lift up your voice and begin to make definite petitions in the spirit I obtain grace Lord visit me in whatever area of concern is someone praying lift your voice and begin to ask by the spirit of grace and by the way let me let me just say a word I'm going to be praying for the sick and everywhere across whether this studio and all those who are connecting I like you to prepare there are people around you who are sick trusting God for a miracle we're going to be ministering the life and the power of Jesus and you'll be sending in your testimonies from across the world that tonight is your night indeed in the name of Jesus Christ now I'm here my assignment here is very simple I have come to prophesy by the Spirit of the Living God I believe in the power of prophecy and while I prepared for this session the Holy Spirit began to minister definite things I'm going to be prophesying across three or four areas the first very quickly is restoration and resurrection listen very carefully resurrection is very very powerful there are three incidences of resurrection in the ministry of jesus 
Number one was Jairus' daughter. You find that for reference in Matthew chapter 9 from verse 18 to 26. Matthew 9, 18 to 26. The Bible says how that Jairus had come to Jesus to plead that he would come to his house to help attend to his sick daughter. Pay attention now. The Bible says while Jesus was on his way going, he encountered another woman who called for his attention. We call her the woman with the issue of blood. And spending some time to deal with her issue, successfully he was able to heal that woman. But by the time he was done with that woman and got to the house of Jairus, the daughter just died. That was a situation that just happened. And while they were lamenting, there was no point, you are coming again now, Jesus, this is over. Jesus said, get out of the house. In other words, he drove every unbelief out of his environment. And then he looked at the little girl and said, Talitha Kumi, little girl, I say unto you, arise. The second incidence of resurrection is found in Luke chapter 7 from verse 11 to 16. The story of the widow at Nain. Now, this story is very, very interesting because this was a woman who was losing all the men in her life. She had lost her husband to be a widow and her only son had just died. The Bible says they were taking him out of the city gate. Now, in those days, if they took a dead body out of the city gate, that was the end of it. Just at the edge of the city gate, here comes Jesus. And he said, what is happening here? And they said, we're about to take this one case close. And he said, not so. He tapped them, brought the coffin down, and resurrected the person. Now, notice, in the first incident, it just happened. In the second incident, it had happened, and they were about to conclude. The third of them was the resurrection of Lazarus. In John chapter 11, when you read from verse 38 to 44, in fact, the Bible says Lazarus was sick, and Jesus himself said that the sickness was not unto death. And yet he was the one who said, our brother Lazarus sleepeth. The disciples said, if he's sleeping, that's good for his health. And he had to come plainly to say, Lazarus is now dead. He said, but let us go and wake him. The Bible says, when they got to the tomb, very interesting. He wept and stood before the tomb and he said, roll away the stone. This is a very prophetic word. I will do the resurrection, but you must have faith enough to roll away the stone. He said, roll away the stone. And, and with audacity and precision, he shouted and he said, Lazarus, come forth. There are many things we are going to be calling to come forth right now. Are we together now? There are people who have lost opportunities, lost relationships, lost several organs in their bodies. Let me tell you something. Jesus is called the resurrection and the life. And when we begin to pray for resurrection, I want you to believe, release your faith, and you begin to experience supernatural miracles. I said restoration and resurrection. Restoration is very important. Please look up. To restore does not just mean to go forward. Advancement is different from resurrection or restoration. For restoration to be needed, it means that something must have impeded your growth and your progress. To be restored means to be taken by the wings of the spirit and to be kept at a level where it will not look like anything ever happened. For instance, a woman who has been barren for five years, if now she's in a position to give birth and she gives birth one by one by one, it will take her another five, six years to have her children. But if God gives her triplets, this is not delivery, this is restoration. Are we together? The first prophetic word for someone is that God is arising as a restorer and he's bringing you resurrection. Number two, very quickly, my second assignment here is to prophesy favor. Ah, someone say favor. favor. Say favor. favor. Let me tell you the truth. This is a subject that I understand very well because I didn't have it before. There are things that you know um, you have tasted of their deficiency, the pain of not having them. 
and I know what has happened in my life and in the life of everyone here as a result of favor. Favor is very powerful. Psalm 102 and verse 13, the Bible says, Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Joshua Selman, mercy upon Nigeria. Mention your name, mercy upon Joshua Selman. It says, For the time to favor her, yea, the Kairos time is come. Hallelujah. Favor is very powerful. According to scripture, there are three biblical indices that characterize the presence of favor in the life of an individual. Number one is unusual kindness. Number two, unusual access. Number three, unusual acceptance. When these tripartite forces coexist in the life of an individual, for sure, the favor of God is upon you. Favor is very different from breakthrough. You know it is favor when it happens again and again and again. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21, it says, And I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians, and it shall come to pass that as ye go, ye shall not go empty. Listen, I'm speaking prophetically to someone because you are crying, you're saying, listen, I've celebrated, I sang, I jumped, but sincerely, apostle, things are not going well in my life. The proof of favor is not money. The proof of favor is access to the hearts of men. When God connects you to the hearts of men and nobles, they will come with their gift. That grace was upon Jesus even as a baby. And the Bible says the Magi began to walk from a distance. They did not mind the inconvenience and they came to greet a baby holding gifts of gold, of frankincense and of myrrh. They came to greet a baby, not an adult. So it's not your age or your background. It's that that grace is not yet on you. When that grace is on you, men will live anywhere to locate you. The Magi from the east, they came to locate that star and to bless Jesus. Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. The B part says, And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. Favor is so powerful that it works with the power of sight. That means if that grace for favor is upon you, only a blind man should not bless you. For as long as they make contact with you, something from your head drives them to want to bless you. This is true. For those who desire establishment of all sorts, I have a scripture for you. Psalm 44 and verse 3. It says, they got not the land in possession by their own sword. Neither did their own arm save them. But thy right hand and thy arm and the light of thy countenance. Why? Because thou hadst a favor. Someone shout favor. favor. Let the devil hear you. Shout favor. favor. Deuteronomy 33 and verse 23. I hope someone's spirit is getting fired up. Deuteronomy 33 and 23. It says, And of Naphtali, he said, O Naphtali, satisfied with favor and full of the blessing of the Lord, possess thou the west and the south. You don't possess just by luck. It takes the fullness of favor and the blessing of the Lord upon you. Oh, Joshua Selman, he said, satisfied with favor and full of the blessing of the Lord, possess thou the west and the south. I'm saying this so that when it's time to make that declaration, you receive from your spirit. I'm tired of this situation, living from pillar to post, running around with no helper. Favor. Favor. I believe in the favor of God. My life is a testament of the favor of God. Hallelujah. When the favor of God is upon you, it will work wonders in your life. This is the mystery of ease. When the favor of God comes upon a man, unusual kindness, unusual acceptance, unusual access, access to the hearts of kings. Remember, Esther was about to take a risk and go to the king's inner chamber without being invited. And in those days, if she stepped into his inner chamber not being invited, it would cost her a life. And she said, Mordecai, I will take that risk. If I perish, 
I perish. And the Bible says she stepped in and protocols were broken. The king lifted up the golden censer and said you could come. I'm speaking to someone. It, it, it may look like it's not yet your turn, but favor can shift people, shift things, and place you in a position where you will experience the power, the grace of God. And I speak that to your life in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter 37. We're going to read 3, 4, 7, 9, and 10 very, very quickly. This is a very interesting story because it had to do with dry bones. The Bible says that Ezekiel was taken in a valley full of dry bones. And the Bible says he saw that those bones had been there a long time. That situation a long time. That pain a long time. It started from 1999. You thought there would be solutions. Now to 2023. And you're wondering, can there be a way out? The Bible says the bones were very dry. And he said, son of man, can this situation live again? Can it change again? Can this family situation, can this health situation, you've been diagnosed with cancer, diagnosed with all kinds of situations. Can it live again? Even the prophet had to confess that this one only thou knowest. I, I don't know what to say about this because of the kind of situation. And he said, prophesy. Prophesy unto these bones. You can prophesy over situations, not just over men. You can speak to situations and tell them, hear ye the word of the Lord. The Bible says the prophet prophesied and as he prophesied, there was a sound. Ah, every time there is a sound, something is happening in the realm of the spirit. There was a sound. And then the Bible says bones began to be joined to bones. It's interesting that the bones did not just come together. The Bible says bone to his bone. That means every situation under a certain sound knows how to bring itself back. Your destiny helper may be far, but he can come to you when a certain sound is produced. I prophesied as I was commanded and he said there was a sound and bones came together bone to his bone. And he prophesied life again, commanding the four winds of the earth to breathe upon the slain. And the Bible says there arose an exceeding great army. Now, please pay attention. Let's go to Exodus chapter 14. We'll read 14 and 15. This was the Exodus of Israel from Egypt. Hallelujah. Moses is standing before the Red Sea with the fearful Egyptians. Uh, I mean, the fearful Israelites and then the Egyptians behind trying to come and Moses himself is confused. What do I do with these people? Millions of them, the Red Sea before them, Egyptians behind them. And here's what he told them. Very visionary leader. Even though he did not have the solution yet, he told them by faith that the Lord will fight for you and you shall hold your peace. The verse of emphasis is verse 15. He says, and the Lord said to Moses, why criest thou unto me? He says, speak to the children of Israel that they go forward. This is the third prophetic word. That God has come to bring a word of advancement. That you have, you have stagnated in a position for a long time. He said, ye have compassed this mountain long enough that you turn ye not what. But he says, speak to the children of Israel. He didn't just say they will go forward. Speak to them. It takes words to move them to go forward. You've been at the same position for a very long time in ministry, in life, no visibility, no grace, no access to nothing. The Lord has sent me here and has sent us here to declare that you must go forward. And listen, as we begin to make these declarations, I want you to believe, see yourself making progress spiritually, financially, and across every aspect of your life. Hallelujah. So this is my, th my threefold assignment and then I quickly speak over the sick. Again, I repeat, restoration and resurrection. Restoration and resurrection. Everything that has died in my life must come alive. It must come alive. I'm talking about myself. Don't watch me. Talk about yours too. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, open your mouth and begin to pray. Restoration. Restoration. 
restoration. Lazarus, it's time to come forth in the name of Jesus. My dead spiritual life, my dead financial life, in the name of Jesus, hear the word of the Lord. I decree and declare, I command by the God of heaven, come alive, come alive, come alive, come alive, come alive. Someone is praying. Someone is declaring, even by the Spirit, he said, declare ye that thou mightest be justified. I command resurrection. I command resurrection in the name of Jesus. Mention every aspect of your life and begin to decree resurrection by the Spirit of the living God. Resurrection, resurrection in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hear me. We are still going to pray this prayer. I know that there are many prophetic things that will happen here very quickly. But for every prayer point I raise, I'm going to be pleading with Pastor Nat to just raise a trumpet. You see, there is a relationship between the trumpet and resurrection. The Bible says when Jesus is about to come, it is by the trumpet of the archangel and all who are dead will come back to life. So as we sound this trumpet, I'd like you to declare that everything that has died, it does not matter how long it has died. It must come to pass. Are you ready now? Open your mouth and begin to pray. Restoration. Resurrection. Restoration. Resurrection. Restoration. Shabrakate barakatos. Embreke tekatos. Shabrakatos keperekita. Restoration. And resurrection. Restoration. And resurrection. In the mighty name of Jesus. Restoration and resurrection by the power of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Is someone ready to declare favor? One of the ways that we access favor is by praying favor provoking prayers. You can pray your way out of shame and reproach. The Bible says, and Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. But that was not always the case. The mother bore him in sorrow and cursed him by her pain. The Bible says, Jabez came to a point where he was angry. He said, oh, that thou wouldest bless me and enlarge my coast and that your hand will be upon me and that it shall be well with me. The Bible says the Lord heard him. Someone is about to pray. Lord, I'm tired of living a natural life struggling as though I do not have a spiritual advantage I invoke the favor of God let it rest upon me unusual kindness towards me unusual acceptance towards me someone is praying unusual kindness unusual access unusual acceptance someone is praying I receive the grace for favor. I receive the mantle for favor. In the mighty name of Jesus. Favor in ministry. Favor in business. Favor in career. Let the advantage that befits the believer in Christ. Let it rest upon me. Favor is a system of advantage. I receive it into my spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Once upon a time, the Bible talks about a cup bearer called Nehemiah. That Nehemiah was a cup bearer and he was concerned about the state of the Jerusalem wall. But because he had favor, he didn't even need to talk to the king. The king looked at him and said, why is your countenance this way? And he said, I am here serving. Whereas the gates, the fences of Jerusalem are falling. And the king said, I will write a letter and give you everything that you need so that you will go and build it. Favor is powerful. It can compel a man to get up, leave his own affairs. Listen, let me tell you this. The world is too wicked to excel with integrity without favor. Mm -mm. The Bible says we know that we are of God. And the whole world lies in wickedness. Whatever makes a man to leave his own affairs and invest his integrity, his credibility, his resources towards you, it must be divine. This is the grace I desire to rest upon someone. Amen. Listen, there are people by the natural course of life, some of us may be 
educationally disadvantaged. Some of us may be sociologically disadvantaged. Favor is an equalizer. It can bring men from whatever background and give you an opportunity. It happens by favor. Can we pray one more time for favor? Yes, sir. Before we get into these prophetic declarations, I want you to think of the very many aspects of your life that have been grounded and stagnated as a result of the absence of favor. Now I want you to cry, Oh God of heaven, send favor. Send favor. Open your mouth and pray. God of heaven, send favor over my finances. Send favor over my ministry. Send thou help from Zion. In the name of Jesus, he said, Thou shall arise and have mercy upon Zion for the time to favor her. Yea, the set time, the time to favor Joshua Selman, the time to favor Joshua Selman. I decree and declare that the time has come. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now hear me. There are demonic forces that have been assigned by darkness to impede the progress of men. Jesus himself said, I will build my church. And he admitted the presence of the gates of hell. That the gates of hell would try to prevail. He said, I desire to come to you, Paul speaking. Even I, Paul, once and again, he said, but Satan hindered us. I hope you know that it was hunger that took Israel to Egypt until they became slaves there. Hallelujah. Hunger will always take Israel to Egypt. In Genesis 42 from verse 1 and 2, the Bible says Jacob was speaking with his sons and said, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. He said, why ye look to one another? He says, behold, I have heard that there is corn in Egypt. Get down Tita and buy for us that we may live and not die. Every time Satan sees that God's people are at liberty, serving him, he will manipulate the economy. He will manipulate several things that begin to lift them and tilt them towards the corridors of compromise. Listen, I'm saying this because we are going to pray. There is a spirit in Egypt that keeps men down. And when God sent Moses... In Exodus chapter 9, give us verse 1 and then we'll read verse 13. This is a powerful prophetic word for someone. Exodus 9 and verse 1. If you can see it projected, let's read it in concert. Ready? One to read. Then the Lord said unto Moses, Go in unto Pharaoh and tell him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go that they may serve me. Someone is about to declare his exodus. He said, let my people go. I'm going to declare over your life, but right now I want you to declare every captivity, foundations, every activity of bloodline, I dissociate myself by the spirit. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Everything connected to ancestry, everything connected to bloodlines, by the power of the Holy Ghost, for the Bible declares, blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us. He nailed it to his cross. Someone pray. Patterns of limitation, patterns of weakness, patterns of death, untimely death, all kinds of demonic things. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. I declare that I am free. Every Pharaoh must let me go. In the name of Jesus Christ financial pharaohs held pharaohs in the name of Jesus release my destiny hallelujah hallelujah once upon a time there was a man who was born blind and when the disciples saw that man they asked Jesus a question they said who sinned that this man was born blind 
Was it himself or his father? They were acknowledging before Jesus that something a person can do can affect the generation before him. And Jesus said, neither. But this is that the glory of the Lord will be revealed. You are going to declare again, it does not matter how long the pattern has been connected to my life by ancestry bloodline. The Bible says we have been called out of every tribe and every tongue and every nation. Open your mouth and begin to declare your release in the name of Jesus. Jesus, I decree and declare that I am supernaturally released from every ordinance of darkness. Someone is praying. Curses, yokes, demonic intrusions. I declare by the spirit of the living God, release me and let me go by the blood of the eternal covenant. By the blood of the eternal covenant, let me go. Let me go. Let me go. Let me go. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me go. Hallelujah. One last scripture and then I begin to declare. Acts chapter 16. Powerful scripture from verse 25. The Bible says, and at midnight, Paul and Silas prayed. Have you prayed? Paul and Silas sang praises. Did you sing praises? And the Bible says it was so loud the prisoners heard them. 26. Suddenly, like it is about to happen now, the Bible says there was a great earthquake. Listen. So that the foundations of the prison were shaken. I love this one. And immediately, all the doors, not some, all the doors, all the doors. There are times that some doors open and some doors remain closed. All the doors, all the doors, financial doors, doors of fruitfulness, all doors were open. All doors were open. Open your mouth and begin to declare all doors, all doors, all doors, all doors. I prophesy and I declare all doors, Ephata, be open. All doors be open. All doors be open. All doors be open. All doors be open. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now I'd like you to prepare yourselves. I'm about to pray and speak over your life. For those who are sick, I'm about to pray for you. Believe in the healing power of Jesus. I want to release supernatural breakthroughs right now all across the globe, right from this studio. Now hear me please. There are two dimensions to the prophetic. Number one, the first dimension of the prophetic as revealed from scripture is the revelatory dimension. The assignment of revelation is to give you direction, strengthen your conviction and impart faith. This is the first dimension of the prophetic, where God reveals details about the lives of men. But the most superior dimension of the prophetic as revealed in scripture is the creative dimension, where you make what has no business happening to happen. Are we together? When the prophet said, by this time tomorrow, he was not revealing what would happen. That possibility had no business happening. It was the prophetic that scheduled that event. Listen, the prophetic, you see, realities are already in existence in the realm of the spirit. But you do not need them there. You need them to be made manifest here in the earth. The Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory even as of the Father, full of grace and truth. There are possibilities already locked up for you. The assignment of the prophetic is to give visibility to the speakings of God. Are we together now? Yes. So, if I tell you, you have 10 naira in your pocket and it's true, that is the revelatory dimension of the prophetic. But if I say in the name of Jesus, I schedule a season of favor. And whilst you are stepping out of here, someone who has no business meeting you comes to meet you and blesses you. That is the creative dimension of the prophetic. Hallelujah. And let me tell you, it is on the strength of that dimension that many destinies rise. Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. The Bible says, give it to us please. I'm about to speak. I sense a strong anointing in this place. 
Ezra chapter 6 and verse 14. And the elders of the Jews built it, and they prospered. How? Through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. They did not prosper just because of the dexterity of their architecture. They prospered through the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo. And the Bible says they built it and they finished it. When prophecy comes, you must finish it. Many of you have started projects you could not finish. You have exhausted your creativity. Step aside and let the prophetic give you an edge. Listen. In ancient times, success was always based on this tripartite formation of king, priest, and prophet. We have lost that pattern in our generation. The prophet will usually double as the priest. You see, kings were helpless unless with the advantage of the prophetic. If they were hedonistic kings, they would surround themselves with necromancers and diviners. They knew that there had to be an advantage of the realm of the spirit. Someone you've been struggling just with your intellect, doing the best that you know to do. Listen, I believe in skill. I believe in competence. But can I tell you, there are times where even if you're a fisherman like Peter, you are in the sea, the right place to catch fish. Having the boat, having the net, you will still not catch fish. At that point, you don't need fishing again. You need the prophetic. Jesus looked at them. He was talking to a professional fisherman who had paid his price. He was at the right location having the right tools, but he still did not catch fish. Someone, you may be a doctor, you may be a, a medical practitioner, you may be a professional. You've invested in yourself. But you see, James 2.26 says that a spirit without a body is dead. Your business is only a body. Where is the spirit back in it? Your ministry is only a body. David knew this about Goliath. So when he came, he said, Goliath, you come to me with your spheres and your bows. But I come to you by a covenant. There is a spirit back in me. Many of you are doing many things that are right. But you have ignored the prophetic advantage. Now the prophetic can be abused. But within the limit of scripture it works wonders. Can I tell you? It is not every anointed prophet that blesses you. Prophets are sent to people. The Bible says there were many widows in Zarephath. But to none was Elijah sent. Meaning he passed other widows and greeted them. Because he had nothing to offer to them. When Elijah was alive, the Shunammite woman was still alive. Yet he did not do anything to her. But when he met the woman in Zarephath, that was the end of her story. I believe that God has sent us here by faith because this is a Kairos moment. I am a product of the prophetic speakings of fathers. I know what prophecy can do. In one day, prophecy can lift you and elevate you to a position of honor and grace. God is speaking to someone. You connected to this hallelujah challenge because you have cried, you have prayed and said, Lord, what is the way? Hosea chapter 12 now, it says, I have spoken in similitudes and I have multiplied visions even by the prophets. When we get to, I think, verse 13 or so, it says, give us verse, verse 13. Now, it says... Uh, is it 12 or 13 now? And by a prophet, thank you, the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. Who brought them? The Lord. But the physical agent was by a prophet. You see, let me tell you how it works in the spirit. The Bible says the spirit and the bride say come. It is not the spirit alone that says come. When the spirit says come, there must be a bride on earth as a witness that echoes what the spirit is saying. The spirit and the bride say be healed. The spirit and the bride say be lifted. If the spirit keeps saying be lifted and there is no bride on earth to echo it, lifting will never happen here. Are we together? So the Bible says from the foundations of the earth, the lamb was slain. But that reality did not save anybody. Jesus had to become a man to come in partnership with that prophecy for salvation to be real. Are we together? I'm about to declare over someone's life and I truly believe that miracles, supernatural manifestations of the Spirit will begin to happen. 
you have prayed some of you have fasted some of you have cried it says and by a prophet the Lord brought Israel out of Egypt and by a prophet was he preserved every time there was need for restoration it was a prophet alas master for it was borrowed and he said where fell it if it was famine in Samaria it was still a prophet by this time tomorrow for someone you are at your end right now, you've cried, you've prayed, and you're saying, I'm a man of God myself. I'm in ministry. It looks like things are not working. I'm a psalmist. God has helped me. I have songs, but I cannot find visibility. Listen to me. Nobody lifts himself. You can respect yourself, but you cannot honor yourself. Honor is conferred upon you by another. Are we together? It says, take thou Joshua, the son of Nun, in whom there is a spirit, and lay your hands upon him. It says, and take some of thy honor and give to him. Honor is transferable. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same, your name is to be alone. I don't have the time but I want you to listen very carefully many years ago the Lord Jesus appeared to me and I shared these encounters to strengthen your faith my life is a product of many many supernatural encounters and in one of those encounters when he appeared to me you may have heard me say it again and again in my teachings light came from him light that no human should be able to stand how i did not die is a question i will ask him when i see his face in heaven and that light entered into my spirit and something supernatural happened from that time the entrance of thy word the bible says gives light and provided there is that light he said the light shineth in darkness john 1 5 and the darkness comprehended it not are we together now? It says, arise, shine. Not because you are tired of sitting. Because your light is come. Amplified says it this way. Arise from the depression and the prostration that circumstances have kept you. It says, rise to a new light. Hallelujah. I'm about to declare. Because the Lord gave me an instruction. Listen carefully. He said, to every nation and to every region I will send you. That light that came from me to you there must be someone in that meeting that that light will be released upon to. He said he sent a word to Jacob, but it lighted upon Israel. There are many of you who were standing in partnership here with the man of God, and let me tell you, there are possibilities that will begin to manifest. There are pastors listening right now. By reason, you will never forget this hallelujah challenge. You will know that you contacted grace for your destiny. Are we together? What you are hearing, I'm not teaching you cunningly devised fables. The things that we have seen, the things that we have heard, the things that we have handled. These are the things that we communicate even by the spirit and I'm going to pray for the sick in one of the encounters I was in a place that looked like there was a curfew and only sick people they were littered on the ground and I began to cry and sob and say what kind of thing is this and I heard the voice from heaven and he said to heal them all so when you hear of the miracles and the things by the grace of God we are people of integrity we don't have time to stage manage nonsense you can't you there's no need faking what is real it's an unnecessary labor to fake things when it can be real. Are we together now? So I want you to believe because there's someone right now, you may even have been appointed unto death, but life is coming to you. The resurrection and the life. Hallelujah. Let's pray for the sick now. If you are sick in your body, I want you to lay your hands. Probably someone is following right now from a hospital. You are, you are with a cancer patient. You are with any kind of infirmity. And in this studio, you can make contact for yourself and for someone. You have the photo of someone by faith. I want you to connect right now. I'm about to release the healing power of Jesus right from this place across the globe. In the name of Jesus, who is the son of the living God. I decree and declare right now. 
in the name of Jesus, the spirit that is back of every infirmity, I curse you by the God of heaven. I curse you by the God of heaven. I curse you by the God of heaven. Now I release the healing power of Jesus. Be healed right now. Blood diseases be healed right now. All kinds of infirmities be healed right now. Be healed right now. Blind eyes be opened right now. Someone on wheelchair stand up right now. Lift those crutches and lift that wheelchair right now. I command heart palpitations. Be healed in the name of Jesus. We change genotypes. We change blood groups. In the name of Jesus Christ. Deaf ears be open right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every medical condition. HIV. Hepatitis. We declare be healed in the name of Jesus. Bone conditions. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Asthma. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Diabetes. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Rheumatoid arthritis. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Heart palpitations. Be healed in the name of Jesus. Whether we mention your case or not. In the name of Jesus, the son of the living God. We declare be healed right now. Be healed right now. And for those appointed unto death. We declare, oh death, where is your sting? And oh grave, where is your victory? We establish victory for you right now. In the name of Jesus. Are you ready to receive prophetic words now? I speak over every closed door. mantle of the apostolic and the prophetic Efata be open Efata be open Efata be open every closed door closed by witchcraft closed by ancestry closed by ignorance closed by disobedience by the mercy of God be opened now be opened now hear me Every man appointed to hold your hands and to lift you to your next season. He said, if there any man in the house of Saul, that I may show him kindness for Jonathan's sake. And they brought a crippled man called Mephibosheth. I prophesy to someone, to the north, the south, the east, and the west, I command your destiny help us to locate you. I command your destiny help us to locate you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Let me declare speed upon your life. The Bible says, And the hand of the Lord came upon Elijah, and he ran and overtook the chariots of Ahab, even down to Israel. Hear me. Hear an hallelujah challenge. I command speed. I command speed. I command speed. Speed in destiny. In the name of Jesus Hallelujah. The Bible says, turn again the captivity of Zion like the streams of the Negev. I want to declare over someone, by the power that raised Christ from the dead, everything that has made for weeping, everything that has made for crying, everything that has made for lamentation, I speak to you. The Bible says, though weeping endures for a night, it says joy comes with the morning. I announce the arrival of your morning. In the name of Jesus Christ. But on that, the Lord is speaking to me particularly that there are barren women, women who have been trusting God, some of them are both 10 years, 15 years. Hear me, tonight is your night. I declare by the Spirit of God, some of you will carry twins, some of you will carry triplets, even by the Spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. Now please lend me one or two more minutes as I wrap up. I want us to declare over Nigeria. I want us to declare over Nigeria. I saw the dear lady with the flag. Can you just lift that flag? Let the devil see that there are people who serve the Lord. 
the Lord gave me a very strange prophetic word for Nigeria. I'm not one who just comes to speak about things carelessly. I respect God and I respect myself. Psalm 76 and verse 10. This is a mysterious parable that you will understand from the weekend that is coming. It says, for the wrath of man will praise you and the remnant of the wrath you will give us KJV the wrath of man shall praise thee and the remainder of the wrath shall doubt there are many prophetic things that are unfolding even beginning from now through the presidential election I've prayed with my people and we're going to pray and declare it doesn't matter who wins. If there is blood shed, it was not worth it. We are going to declare first and foremost that the Prince of Peace, the covenant of David that is of peace will, will move across the length and the breadth of this nation. We declare over Nigeria. Nigeria, in the name of Jesus, there will be no blood shed. There will be no blood shed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hear me. What God is going to be doing in this nation, he's going to sign a signature upon this nation to once again show that he is God and he rules in the affairs of men. This is the only thing I'm going to tell everybody. In the midst of all that happens, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. I'm saying this in the open. Stand still. Don't just want to see the salvation. The first thing is stand still. And then you will see the salvation of the Lord. For surely I tell you the Egyptians you see today. You will see them no more forever. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father we thank you for this hallelujah challenge. I'm going to request that Pastor Nat just blows the trumpet seven times. I know he spoke about number 10, but seven times is a number of perfection. We sang praises, we rejoiced. For every one of this sound, it is a sound to your destiny. It is a sound to every aspect of your life that the Lord himself is visiting you. And by the way, while that is happening, I'm sure that he may take it from here. We've stretched you a bit. There are people here who are yet to encounter Jesus genuinely and sincerely. He said, let my people go that they may go and serve me. Let me take a minute to speak to someone who is dilly-dallying about Jesus. Here is an opportunity here at Hallelujah Challenge to make Jesus Lord of your life. We are here because of what he's done in and through our lives. You may be watching from the United States, from Europe, somewhere in Africa or in this nation. Right where you are, I want to just make a prayer and I want you to pray with me. Lay your hand on your chest and say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe in you that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive you into my heart as my Savior, my Lord, and my King. I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight until forever, I am a child of God. Amen. I pray for you based on the authority of Scripture that your sins are forgiven. We call you a bona fide recipient of the life of God in the name of Jesus. So it's going to be seven shouts, Halal Yeshua. We're celebrating God. And after these seven shouts, I want you to rejoice knowing that you will return with testimonies for sure in the name of Jesus.
Hallelujah, shall rejoice. Somebody shout. Now, now, very quickly, those who give their lives to Christ, go to hallelujahchallengelive.com. Click on new converts, rededication. Please fill the form. In the course of the challenge or after, we will communicate with you. We, we have a team, about 30 to 40 young people, and their job is really to help you with your new life, help you find your footing. Please fill the form. Now, very quickly, you know, 1 Kings 17, 13, Elijah the prophet went to a widow, and it was the widow's last meal, and said to her, give, you know, we've spoken about the prophetic, I mean, can you celebrate the grace of God on this man? You know, you know by now that I love apostle without apology. I mean, let me say it for the whole world again. I love the grace on this man, and not just his grace, his person. The grace of the word smith. You see what he does with the word? I mean, just that Acts 16 scripture just opened up to me again. You know, and all those open. It was clear to me that there is a strategy that opens all doors. There are strategies that open some doors. But in that scripture is a strategy that can open every door. Door of the womb, door of career, door of marriage. So there is a strategy. Can you celebrate the grace on this man? Now, what I said we do, the last time Sister IT came, we, we were so blessed. Now we've been stupendously blessed. I decided that everyone who dispenses grace from this altar this season, that we will minister to them, not just with our prayer, but with our, with our seeds. I have permission from them, and this is not their idea, this is my idea. So those who want to criticize, leave them. Follow me. Write about me. I'm the one. And there is no, I've not gone into any, any agreement. I don't play those games. If you know me a bit, you know that I fear God. But the instruction I have is that we will, you see, we don't muzzle the ox that treads the corn. Apostle finished ministering from a meeting. He jumped in his car. He, he missed the first flight, right? They were prepared to book a jet by themselves just to come here. Put your hands together. So, you are going to help me flash Apostle Sel Selman's account number, Messi Chimo's account number. Put it there. Quickly. Quickly. We have a gift from the challenge. You know, the gift you give and all of that from your free will. We have it prepared, but we want everyone that has drunk from this grace to, to sow into this grace. We want to bless them. We want to encourage this ministry. Please put it there. We want them to experience a tsunami in their bank accounts today. Oh, yes. See, I believe, um, I believe in the total gospel. I believe in the prosperity of the saints. Amen. He that waters must what? See, these are men who don't, we don't need money to be, it's a simple life. Paul says, I do not desire a gift. I desire what fruit that will abound to your own account. Please, put it up there. Put apostles, account details. Put minister, Mercy Chinro, you know, she just got married. Let's, let's, let's bless the blessed. <laughs> put it there. And then I was praying in the room. I was praying in the room. And I felt a need that, you know, the two prophetic songs that we had from Dunsi, which we've used from Frank Edwards that blessed us. We want to be a blessing from them. Put the account details. Put it there. And then I also decided that this team, remember I said my consecration from the challenge is I do not take a dime from the account. It's, it's, just, it's not that it's wrong. But it's a personal consecration just to watch my heart so that I don't feel like doing challenge every month. <laughs> Amen. So you're going to put the team's, you know, Hallelujah Challenge account as well. Put it there. Tonight is a night of unusual grace. Let's be a blessing to these people. Quickly, quickly. Lift your hands and give God thanks. The, the miracles I saw happening, before I forget, I was having my bath and I heard a name. I heard Teriba. As I focused on that name, I heard Lanre again. I don't know the person. I had to go to Google. Lanre Teriba. I don't know if you know him. But as I 
thought about him, I felt like praying the blood of Jesus to cover him and that God will deliver him from trouble. Can you lift up your hands? I don't know him. I don't know his songs. I was having my bath, but I heard Teriba. As I meditated, I heard Larry Teriba. And I went on Google and realized that he's a musician. Say, Father, Father have, mercy have mercy on Larry Teriba. We cover him by the blood of Jesus. Deliver him from trouble. Open your mouth and intercede for someone. Whoever knows him can tell him that we pray for him. Father, you put that name in my heart. I've never met this person. But on this altar, we pray for him. Show him mercy. Let your blood avail for him. Deliver him from trouble. They will not mourn over him. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, we thank you. You sought for a man to stand in the gap. We have stood in the gap for this brother. Deliver him from trouble. In Jesus' name. Amen. So let's have Brother Dunce's details, Frank Edwards' details. Let's let Hallelujah Challenge bless these vessels that... See, the testimonies we have from the challenge are mind-blowing. There's one I gave to be printed out. We can't read because of time. From Congo. You know, just strange acts of God. We can't buy a miracle, you know, with, even with a billion dollars. How about the people who are saved? How about the people who are delivered from death? How about the unseen mercies? How about these shifts in the atmosphere of the nations of the earth? There are certain things that are sent to me that I can't share publicly. I share with my wife. She knows them. Your, your ears will tingle. The people who connect, the things God does, the testimonies I share are the fringe ones. So God is doing terrible things. And today he has sent us his prophet. He has sent us his apostle. And his psalmist. Put those details again. You can take off the one for, you know, the team. But let's put apostles. I mean, well, just keep them there so the people can be blessed. Amen. I don't know why I feel led to do this this time, but I'm sure that God wants to release, you know, the forces of the Gentiles into the hands of his people. Amen. Amen. Have we been blessed? Take your journals. We're about to close. Take your journals. Remember, the journal is just your point of contact. You write your expectations, and we trust that the expectations will become testimonies. We have seen them happen again and again. So we we sing these songs prophetically and wave them as a wave offering. Amen. Please, Minister, mercy come no one to obey this one. Amen. Let's obey it. Amen. So wave it, wave it, wave your journal. Wave it. Wave it, wave it. Wave it. Please bless everyone on that. Frank Edward's song was our theme song. We can see it. We, you see, we are just encouraging these people to go further so that they can get more of these prophetic songs. You see, if we encourage our people, if we encourage our people, they won't want to switch places. We complain that people start in church and then they are in the world. But do we encourage them? I'm here because a man called Pastor S. Confon decided to make me his project. There was a time he bought seven trumpets. How many? Seven trumpets. They said, get the very best. Sit down here. They bought me a brand new car. They paid my rent. They said, what? He said, just sit down, pray, practice. That's all. Pastor S. Confon, I honor him. And that's why I'm here. And I must do the same for other people. We must also do the same. So let's encourage people who bless us. Amen. Are we ready? Wave your journals. Father, as we wave these journals and sing this song, let the request of your people become testimonies. Oh, 
Tobechuku, Tobechuku, he has done it for me. Tobechuku, 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 he has done it for me. Listen, even before I pray, Jehovah needs me. Taking away my fears, giving me peace of mind. Oh, see the way he answered me. Worship him, worship him, worship him. 